Hi everyone. In today's video, we'll look into graph attention network. First, we will read the paper. Then we will go through the implementation of a graph attention layer in PyTorch to metric. At the end, we will look into the code that uses graph attention layer. So this is the paper for graph attention networks. It came out in ICLR 2018. The architecture is down here. The input to our layer is a set of node features. H is the feature matrix with the first feature vector, the second feature vector, all the way to n feature vectors. The layer produces a new set of node features of potentially different cardinality. So the, the, the output is new features, a transformed features for all, the, for all the nodes in the feature matrix. A shared attention and mechanism computes the attention coefficients. So HI is the feature vector for the node I, HJ is the feature vector for the node J, and W is the weight matrix. And this is the attention coefficient. To make coefficients easily comparable across different nodes, we normalize them across all choices of J using the softmax function. So this, these are the coefficients between node I and node J. It is normalized by all K nodes. K stands for the neighbors to the node I. This is basically the same softmax function, but they applied some linearity. Here is a visualization for the attention mechanism. This is the feature vector for node I multiplied by the weight matrix. And this is the feature vector for, for node J multiplied by the weight matrix. These two feature vectors will be multiplied by the weight matrix and apply some linearity and using softmax we will get the attention coefficients. And uh, this is a visualization of the whole scheme. The new feature vector for the first node will be a result of that. The original feature vector added to all neighbors, second node, third node, all the way to the sixth node. And this addition is different based on the attention head. Each color here, the, the purple, the blue, the green, each represents a, a, an attention head. They used K equals three heads. These feature vectors will be merged using different attention heads. The final result would be either concatenation of these feature vectors or averaging all these feature vectors. So this is at the end, we will get a new representation, a new feature vector for the node I after applying the attention coefficients across all neighbors. Now let's look how a graph attention layer is implemented in PyTorch geometric. X is the feature vector and in the paper it was H. So here in PyTorch geometric, they used X this theta is the parameter. In the paper, they used it as w, but here they used theta. It actually separates the original feature vector from the neighboring vectors. For the original feature vector, they used theta source, and for the neighboring vectors, they used theta target. And the whole thing is just uh, passes through some linearity. And this is the, for the formula for computing the attention coefficients. It's the same as equation number three in the paper. So let's jump right in the, into the code. Here they say, in case we are operating in pipartite graphs, we apply separate transformations, linear source and linear destination to source and target nodes. So if the input channels are the same, we're using one linear transformation. If the input channel have two dimensions, we're using the first dimension for the linear source transformation and the second dimension for linear destination transformation. And here are the learnable parameters to compute the attention coefficients, the attention for source and the attention for destination. Let's jump all the way here to compute the, the output tensor. First, we get, we get the, the edge update. We get, we, we're computing alpha. Alpha is computed in this function, edge update, which uses the leak law, softmax, a dropout, and alpha is retained. Basically here they applying this formula here, the equation number three in the paper. We got alpha retained here, then we computing the propagate across the graph using the H index, which is the adjacency matrix, X is the feature matrix, and alpha is the attention coefficients. This will result in the output tensor, and it got out either by concatenation we concatenate all the output features or we are taking the average of these output features. So this is how a graph attention layer is implemented in PyTorch geometric.
Now let's see how can we use a graph attention layer in the code. First, I would like to acknowledge the help of PyTorch Geometric Tutorials. Specifically, I'm using code from this tutorial, Node Classification with the Graph Neural Networks. I'm borrowing some code from that tutorial. This is the main reference for Graph Attention Networks in BibTeX format. Uh, here I'm installing PyTorch Geometric. I'm importing some libraries. And here I'm setting the random seeds for reproducibility. So if you can run this notebook, you will get the same numbers I'm getting here. Here I'm creating synthetic data set. I'm specifying the colors and I'm applying these colors to the labels. This is how the synthetic data set looks like with the three clusters. And here I'm creating the adjacency matrix. I already explained this part in my spectral cluster tutorial. So if you're interested in this part, you can check that video. I'll link it below. And this is the resulting adjacency matrix. You can see that there are some links between the orange cluster and the green cluster. And there are some links between the blue cluster and the green cluster. And in this cell, I'm packaging uh, the synthetic data set in a, in a data variable just to make it compatible with PyTorch geometric classes. And I'm using random split to split the data into training, validation, and testing. Here are the splits, the training split, the validation split, and the test split. This is a visualized function that uses TSNE from scikit-learn just to visualize the embeddings after applying the graph attention networks. Here is the class for graph attention networks. I'm using two graph attention layers. The first layer takes the two features, the x, y coordinates, and the hidden dimensions are 16. The input to the next layer would be the hidden dimension of the first layer multiplied by the number of heads because we are concatenating the features. So it would be 128 mapped into three classes. I'm using these two function for the training and testing, and I'm using GNN flag to pass the feature matrix and the adjacency matrix if I'm using graph and neural networks, and only the feature matrix if I'm using multilayer perceptron. Let's start training the graph attention. Uh, this line just basically limits the height of the output. We don't need uh, all the lines to be produced. We just need a small space of the screen, and we can scroll, scroll down that space. I'm setting the optimizer, the criterion, and I'm running the training for 200 epochs. And I'm getting 100 accuracy on the test data set. And this is how the graph attention mapped the three, three clusters. So it managed to separate the orange cluster from the blue cluster and the green cluster. So instead of being all nested together, it managed to separate them apart. Now let's test the same synthetic data set using multi-layer perceptron. So I'm using two linear layers. The first linear layer takes two as the input, which is the x, y coordinates, and uh, the hidden dimension are 16, and the second layer maps 16 to three classes. This is the optimizer for the MLP, and this is the criterion, and I'm training the MLP for 200 epochs, and I'm getting 100% accuracy on the test set. So how is it possible that multi-layer perceptron gets the same accuracy as graph neural network? Isn't graph neural network is more advanced and more recent, and it should beat multi-layer perceptron? So it all lies in the dataset. Let's go back to the dataset and try to get our heads around this. This is our dataset. It's basically x, y coordinates. And we created the adjacency matrix, guess what, using the x, y coordinates. So the adjacency matrix didn't provide any new knowledge to the graph neural network. All the knowledge in the adjacency matrix was redundant because it was implemented using the, the basically the feature matrix. This can be explained by the expressive power of graph neural networks. So if you go to this paper, the expressive power of graph neural networks as a survey, they have a good figure to split this. This is the ability of mapping the features. We got three classes. In the mapped space, they should be far away from each other. But graph neural networks has another ability, which is topology representation ability. So these three nodes are connected to each other. In the mapped space, they should be still connected to each other. So this is the GNN's expressive power. This is a visualization. So what happened in our case is that these two abilities were the same. We didn't provide the graph neural networks with the new information to work on. The adjacency matrix was redundant to the feature matrix.
So because the adjacency matrix did not provide any new information, graphene neural networks and multilayer perceptron performs the same because they are all using the feature matrix. Just look into multilayer perceptron. It just defines the decision boundaries very accurately to the training set, to the validation set, and to the testing set. So rule number one in using graphene neural networks, make sure that the JCC matrix provide new information. Otherwise, just use the feature matrix. Now let's look to another data set where the JCC matrix provide new information. Corvette data dataset has 2,700 documents. Each document has 1,400 bag of words. So the features are bag of words and has almost 10,000 links. These links are the citation between the papers. So it could be two papers in two different fields that one of them is citing the other. So this is a new knowledge. The feature matrix is back of words. This is, a, this is one set of information. And the adjacency matrix is the citation link. This is another set of information. Let's see how the graph attention network will perform on this data set. Here we're training the graph attention network with the same class. We didn't change the layers and we get 76% accuracy. And the MLP, we get 57 accuracy. So the difference lies in the adjacency matrix, whether it provides new information or not. So this is the summary of our results. Using the synthetic data set, both methods got 100% accuracy. But when we use Cora data set, with the adjacency matrix actually provides a new information. The graph attention got 76% and the multilayer perceptron got 56%. So I got notes here on this topic. If you're using graph for your data set, it depends on whether you're using supervised learning or not. Or do you have training samples in your data set or not? If you don't have training samples, then you're using unsupervised learning. So you can create the HCC matrix and use spectrum clustering. There are a bunch of methods that could create the GCC matrix for spectral clustering. But if you're using supervised learning, you should ask the question, does the GCC matrix actually present new information? If yes, you can use graphic neural networks. If no, you're better off using multilayered perceptron. That's it guys for today's video. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. By the way, you can find the link to the notebook I'm working on in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.